I think the key to all of this is make sure you're you're planning, not being reactive with your taxes. A lot of people are meeting with their tax professionals. You know, it's February right now in the time of this recording. So they're meeting with their tax professionals kind of right now and saying, okay, what do I owe? Rather than meeting with them before the end of the year hits and saying, okay, what do I want to owe? Welcome, everybody, to the Creative Cash Flow Show. I'm your host, Jesse Mills, where I bring you real estate secrets for achieving time and money freedom every week. And ladies and gentlemen, I am so pumped to have on the show today a couple of guests who are going to save you a lot of money, make you a lot of money, right? And these are people you need to be listening to right now. So whatever you're doing, stop it, drop it, right? Don't roll, right? You're not on fire. But you're going to feel like you're on fire when you listen to some of these tips and I have uh, today with us Byron McBroom, CPA and mentor from Measured Results, uh, tax accountant, and Melanie Sigma. Am I saying it right, Melanie? Yeah, Sigma. good job. Perfect. Yep. Just like it's just like it sounds. That's with, right. With one stop tax strategist. And uh, guys, you you know me. I love to just meet awesome people. I love to get out. I like to network. And right, your uh, your net worth is your network. It's a cheesy saying, but guys, it is so true. And so we wouldn't even be talking if I hadn't gone to an event that they were a part of, right? I think, what, last May? The yeah. Hero event with Tim Mai and John Jackson. And we got to uh, connect there. And you guys are just doing some very cool and unique, different things than most folks I know in your world. And so I really wanted to uh, to to pick your brains and get you on the show. So I'm glad that today is the day we're here. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, so I know you're active. You guys are active with working out. Let's get into that first because <laughs> we try. <laughs> we try, Byron. Uh, and, and, and so for for the notes, guys, Byron is the dad. Melanie's the daughter. <laughs> yep, yep. And Daddy Daddy-o. called out daughter. Somebody did get up today for her workout. Well, okay. To, to, to and you don't know the fair. you don't know the whole story because last <laughs> August I had a tree fall on me and break my back. Okay. Jesus, that's right. And so I'm I'm here yeah. trying to be in recovery and do my rehab, but my daughter bails on me in the morning. Oh my God! You had a tree fall on him, and you bail on him. I, you know, I just can't keep up. <laughs> can't keep up with the guy who had a tree almost crush him. Byron, you're one a tough mother. If you like, you fended off the tree, and then you're up and going, man. How are you doing now? I'm doing good. I got my neck brace off. I actually shot my. My golf score last week or earlier, yeah, last Friday yeah. was the same as my pre-tree falling score. All right. So I, I brought my golf swing back. I just got to bring back my fitness. But you know, when somebody oh doesn't show God. up, they don't show up. <laughs> well, you're, you're your own. You're your own enemy. You could you could have gotten up your own. <laughs> oh, he man. was out there on the uh, when he had his neck brace on. He was out there on the golf course with the with the the back brace. It was this whole like Ninja Turtle get up. And people would ask, "Is that is that to help his swing?" Like they were, they were <laughs> he could have sold those out there. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. We did this very exclusive golf camp. He got it yeah. there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. special order. Yeah, stand exactly. by the tree first. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! Wow! 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 Well, so so uh, folks, if you can't tell already, these guys are fun, but they're hard workers, and they are very dedicated to what they do. Right? You guys are up early. You work it out. You uh, have a very good, you know, exercise and physical fitness routine. Work hard, play hard, kind of people, right? People I kind of oh, love yeah. to, I love to hang out with. Uh, so tell me, kind of how uh, measured results got started, Byron, and your history with that. And then Melanie, you can kind of transition into what you do with one stop tax strategist. But guys, part of what we're going to get to here, right, is you think you're dealing with somebody that knows a lot more than someone else, right? That's who you want in your team as a tax professional and strategist, right? Anybody could just take the numbers you you give them and do stuff with it, okay? And that doesn't help you, right? When there's all of these, what, I don't know, how many pages of law and tax code and things always change anyway, but it's massive. And so you need a guide, somebody who understands these different things. And, um, and, and there's way more to than just reviewing what you've got, right? Than, than planning for something. To add to that, if you take a Colt 45 and you stand and hold up the tax code, 
and you shot the Colt 45 at it, it would not penetrate it. That's how thick it is. Wow. I did not know that. Yeah. That is a crazy stat. Fun fact. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Really? Yeah. You've tried that, haven't you, Byron? <laughs> that was one of his accidents. He's almost yeah. died like seven times. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. And you had a whole thing of tannerite at the bottom of the tree and that's what, you know, right? That's what happened. Yeah, exactly. That's insane. Okay. So yeah. So clearly it's it's a crazy disaster um, of, of, of complication, right? Um, some may say on purpose, right? So yeah. So talk to me. What, what got you into this? What, what keeps you, you know, jazzed to get up early in the morning and help people not pay so much and know the secrets that you guys know that everybody else knows. Well, it's kind of an odd story. Actually, in college, I had a roommate, okay? And the guy was a pathological liar. Jesus. And he, he kept talking about how his dad was a CPA. And he just he made it sound so good that I said, well, I'm going to take an accounting class. So then I took an accounting class, and it was a young teacher. She was really cute. So I kind of said, I like this accounting so then I kind of got into that. I started reading tax books. I was working for Rayleigh's, which is a supermarket. And so, so I kept reading tax books and tax books and decided this is kind of where I wanted to go. And then uh, that just kind of led me down the path. I've always liked to play games. I was a chess champion at, at, at eighth grade. And oh, wow. I always played the board games where you conquer the world. And, uh, and it was, I was always trying to figure things out. So now this has just become the new game of how to figure it out. And I always like to help people. So I like to figure out how to modify and tweak the tax code to, to help people save some money and accomplish their dreams. So, Wow, that's, that's super cool. Yeah, and that's the thing. is that It's a puzzle, and, and, and it's a game, right? And some people play it well. Some people play it really well. Some people barely play it. Some people <laughs> haven't opened up the freaking box yet, right? Digging yeah. the pieces. Solar wrapper. <laughs> yeah, solar wrapper. They just go, oh, okay, here's what we do. Dig, dig, dig. Funny. That's, that's part of how I went to the college I went to actually was was the seven to three ratio of good looking girls to guys, right? There you go. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, the, the college I'm going to right now is like a bunch of old like dudes and like this one, I like this one. So I transferred. Nice to know that it helped you with your career as well. I know. Fantastic. Oh my God. All right. So so you've been doing taxes, been a CPA for how many years now, Byron? Well, well I started in 81. So I'm, I'm pretty damn old, okay? <laughs> Longer than I've been alive, he's been doing taxes. <laughs> and uh, I've worked for a, a CPA firm for a couple of years. Uh, I didn't like, they were kind of boring. And so I left that firm after two years and went to work as a construction company uh, for a construction company as their controller. Mm, okay. And this company had promptly lost about $1.8 million on only a $200,000 capitalization. But it was the best thing in the world for me because I learned what not, to, what not, what to do when you don't have any money, when you can't pay the IRS. I learned all these valuable things on how to survive, and it really helped me assist people because you know business is a struggle. A lot of times you have a struggle making payroll, or you have a struggle paying the bills, and and this first experience was a really good experience. Uh, that guy, the owner of that company, he he's the one that convinced me to start my own business. And then I got I got very lucky. There was a company called American Savings and Loan, okay. and they were going. They had had a, a big problem with uh, a lot of foreclosures, and so they hired me to actually fly around the country and do fraud audits for them. Wow. And I actually had to hire ten CPAs within six months. No way. So it just kind of launched my career, and then and it just took off from there. And the rest is history. And then here we are today. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. And I know this. So you love to get out and you love to meet with people, right? And you love to to teach and educate and speak, which is super cool. And obviously that went through the gene pool to daughter. Oh, yeah. And uh, Melody, you love that as well. Yeah. So, so talk to us about one-stop tax strategists. And, and so you're watching dad do all this stuff, right? And some kids are like, I don't want to do what daddy does or I don't <laughs> want to do what mommy does. And you followed in his footsteps. Yeah, growing up, I thought that I would be the last kid that would ever be in business with my dad because that just doesn't seem like that was never like something that was fun to me. Um, but then they needed help, and when they were their team was growing super fast, his team was growing super fast, and so he asked to ha me to help with the you know the initial process for the clients. And I found out it was really fun to save people money, so I got I get to be a part of the fun process. Um, right. And so his firm measures results. There was, they're very niche, you know, they're in a niche market with who they serve. 
and they're really good at what they do. Um, they like to stick to what they do and be good at that. But I found we were turning away some people that we couldn't help that still needed help. And so I talked to my sister um, and we jo- we started One Stop Tax Strategist to be able to partner with other CPAs so that we can, you know, kind of be a concierge and help business owners find the best fit for them and their industry, where they're at in their journey, their entrepreneur journey, and just kind of help people find the best CPA fit for them. So that's what we do. That's awesome. That's awesome. Kind of, yeah, I like that little like boutique consulting firm, right? Yeah. 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 So give, give me a couple of examples of like this, this business uh, person or, or partnership might go down this path, right? And then this person might go down a totally different path based on like what you see. Is there certain things like signs that you go, oh, oh tick, 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 tick the boxes? Yeah, like startup businesses, they're focused on just making money and, you know, keeping as much money in, into their business to go towards growth as possible. So that they're going to have different needs than somebody that uh, yesterday they had, I talked to somebody yesterday that has five different companies, you know, they have a huge payroll. And so we were able to get them a big deferral of about three to four million. And so it just depends on where you're at, what different needs you have. And then people in real estate have totally different needs than somebody in software, for example. Um, You know, there's all those different loopholes and rules that real estate professionals can take advantage of that not every tax professional knows. And so it's really important to find somebody that knows those things so that you can take advantage of every single thing possible. Would you say, in your opinion, don't worry, we're not we're not bad mouthing anyone specific. We're just saying in general. Would you say that there's a lot of folks out there that don't quite get all of the real estate rules and and special uh, things that you know you can do? There's a lot. I'll say the average person that I talk to saves about thirty eight thousand dollars, little over that. And so that just tells me that their tax professional is not a bad person. They're they're probably really great at filling out the forms and they're doing the best they can. They're just not as creative as I'd say. We're, we're fortunate that my dad is, he's a little mad scientist, we call him, or <laughs> realize actually. I'm working, on, I'm working on growing my eyebrows long. <laughs> you got to do that, guys. You can twist we it. always thought he was a, an entrepreneur at heart, but then, you know, he went to a Tony Robbins event and realized he's actually an artist. And so taxes is art. And so that's just a unique thing that you can't find anywhere else, really. It's very hard to find a creative CPA. Usually that's an oxymoron. <laughs> yeah, good call. What happens with a lot of accountants, though, is they're they're very hardworking people. And they're very honest. They're, they're super nice. But they just get so busy. And they get so wrapped up in just filling out the forms that they, they're, by the time they get to the end of tax season, a lot of them are just worn out. And they're just too tired to to take the time to extra to do research. Long time ago, I took myself out of the production of the tax returns, where I don't do tax returns anymore. All I do is sit and try to dream up things on how I can take a tax step idea and systemize it so that my whole team and the and the other CPAs that Melanie works with can really concentrate on how to save people money. So we, we've developed, I've, I have a 52-point checklist I use when we do tax planning for people. We have a Wow. seven-step tax solution where we run through the processes. This is the one that most people save an average of $38,000. Now, this is, admittedly, this is someone making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year that's in a higher tax bracket. But it's, 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 even if you save 15, it's still $15,000. Absolutely. Yeah. And they're, and they're not complex strategies. And usually when we tell a CPA about them, oh, yeah, I could, yeah, that you can do that. You can do that. But then this, the, the client says, well, why didn't you tell me about it? You yeah. Know, and what's they, the answer? They, they know all these strategies. They just don't share the ideas with people. And I think it's because they don't have systems in place to be able to do it without overwhelming themselves. So I'd say that's what is different. Well, I think you, yeah. And you, you hit on, I think what I think is really good point, right? Is there's people who just do the job and the job is getting through tax season, kind of ticking the boxes, filling them out, getting the returns done. And then there's like you said, like like the game of like digging in the weeds and you know going through the all all of the codes and seeing the stuff, um, that's that's completely different, right? Like if you if you have you know a, a twelve hour day during tax season, those two things are not the same job at all. No. It's probably not the same person doing that, and one's yeah. going to fire someone up, and one's maybe not going to fire the other person up. 
it's kind of like working on the business versus in the business, right? Definitely. Exactly. Well, there's a guy yeah. in town here, and he's a hard worker. Makes lots of money, but he works probably from six in the morning till night at night, every night, seven days a week, from now to the April 15th. And how are you going to have some time to sit just for thinking time? You know, it's very yeah. important in your business to set aside thinking time. And most people don't think anymore, you know. But if you set up thinking time, how can I make it better, faster, cheaper, you know, more efficient, more effective? And and pretty much I've been able to pull myself out. So that's what I spend most of my time doing. And so it's more rewarding for me. And it's what, what drives me to help save people money. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, and that's, I mean, after how many years you've been doing this and you still have the passion behind it, right? You can tell, I mean, you're smiling as you say it. <laughs> I know you don't have to do this, right? So that means it's something that obviously you, you enjoy and you're good at and, you know, you're lucky to have found something where I, you know, I would say I'm in the same camp as you guys is I love what I do. It doesn't really seem like work to me. Now, are there days and times? Yes, of course. But more often than not, right, I'm, I'm juiced to do what I do, you know, all day, every day. And it's kind of part of how your life is, right? Because you like it and, and you're helping. And the more you get to help, the more you get to make. And the more you make, the more you're helping. So this really cool synergy yep. in this kind of circle, right? Definitely. I love it. Like that Zig Ziglar quote, uh, help other people get what they want and then you'll end up getting what you want. Totally. That's paraphrasing, but. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. By the way, how did you like Tony Robbins? Which event did you go to? We were actually business partners with him. Okay. Wow. And so we would go to the business mastery events. Okay. We'd sit in the back, in the back room and he would talk about accounting and then to open the doors, there'd be a tsunami wave of people running to make an appointment with us. It was really pretty amazing. Wow. That is crazy amazing. Who, but it who would, gets to you know, say they've had that opportunity? Yeah. And experience yeah, it, it that. was pretty interesting. It was a lot of fun. It kind of got cold. wiped out with COVID. <laughs> is what cold, do you say? It got it was wiped freezing out. freezing in there. Oh, uh, it, oh yeah. he keeps it so cold in the room? Did you, have you gone to one of his events? I haven't yet, no. I've been oh, like they're this close two times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he gets um, literal freezer trucks, and he, he doesn't pumps like in. to sweat on stage. <laughs> he pumps in the cold air from freezer trucks, so it's it's literally freezing. Like it's people bring like jackets, and it's crazy. Wow, that's awesome. I would wear two pairs of socks, long johns, my you know wool pants, uh, two t shirts, a long sleeve shirt, a jacket, and when nobody was there, I'd put a beanie on. Oh so my cold. lord! It was just freezing. It was it was it was cold. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy, man. So now mad. you know if you do ever go, I'd be uh, prepared. Yeah, seriously. Holy cow! Well, so the people in the room are jumping up and down, and they're not cold as we are. Yeah, you're you're in the back, shivering, waiting for people to come yeah. side up. <laughs> no, that, oh my gosh! <laughs> well, so you you had mentioned about like um kind of thirty eight strategies. Right. Well, I have for our customers. We have what we call a fifty-two point checklist. So your fifty-two and I point checklist, this so that yeah. my team could bring the same strategies that I bring to the table. So they just as at the end of every year, we meet with almost every client, and we sit and go through all these different strategies to make sure they're you know we like to say paying as little tax as legally possible and staying out of trouble with a big emphasis on staying out of trouble. Is that it? You know? sure. And some of the strategies are 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 fairly simple. Like, for instance, if you have children under 18 years old, a good example is, is hiring your kids as a model for your for your Facebook, your Instagram. They can make, uh, this year, 13850 for twenty twenty uh, for the current year, and, 13, and you get a $13,000 yeah. tax deduction. So, 13850 you know, per child yep. under 18 for modeling. Per child. That's right. Yeah. I have my Instagram account. My kids, my, I actually teach about kids' payroll with my kids as an example. Smart. And uh, they—that's how they get paid. That is awesome, man. They're get, that 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 five dollar allowance for doing the trash and the dishes. They're going to be yeah. like, no, no, no. And <laughs> these kids are modeling, <laughs> and that's they got right. a thousand likes. Like mm, we're doing that. That's right. That's awesome. And now, would do like, do you need a contract for that, or what? You know, if if the earth comes knocking, what do you need to show? There's a certain way you want to do it to to maximize the tax savings. Okay. For instance, if you're a corporation and you pay your children, then you have to pay payroll taxes on it. Sure, sure. But if you 
if you hire yourself or hire your spouse as an advertising agency, which is super easy to make, and then they hire the kids as a sole proprietor, there's no payroll taxes on it. Mm -hmm. So then they make, they get the third, you get that, you send your wife a 1099, let's say, uh -huh. and then she pays the kids. So there's no tax on that money. And then you use that money for their allowance, for their clothes, for their, some people pay for their private school, you know, fund a Roth IRA. They can also IRA, fund a Roth IRA, IRA, yeah. Some people wow. will buy an IUL insurance policy and build up cash with it while the kids are little. Then they can borrow out of that later for college. So it's a, it's a good way to save for college. But none of these are real complex strategies, but they're fine that people just don't do them. A lot of, you know, some people do it because you see it on TikTok and all that stuff. But the the large majority of people just are not taking advantage of all these simple, simple strategies to save money. That is genius. One, one of our clients was a breeder. You know, he had six <laughs> kids. <laughs> you know, it was a his, hers relationship. Uh -huh. And you take someone with six kids, paying them 13000 a piece, that's a pretty There's substantial a tax deduction just with that alone. <laughs> wow. That is crazy. And it's now, right off the top? It, well, it's right off the top, yeah. Pretty yeah. AGI. You have to be careful, though, because it has to be reasonable work for reasonable pay. So a lot of people say, oh, they're doing filing for me or they're doing computer entry and it's a three-year-old. Well, that's not reasonable. Yeah. That's yeah. why we like doing the yeah. modeling strategy because- the Gerber baby made sixty thousand dollars a year. He actually got a raise this year. I I looked it up. It's like now seventy or eighty thousand. <laughs> really, Gerber baby? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Still, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, it's pretty good royalties. And you know, know, my kids are as good, cute as the Gerber baby. You know, <laughs> no, I, I, I'd say cuter. I mean, yeah, you're, that should be eighty. Yeah, 90. I've I've talked to some people that have had their kids. They're like, yeah, we could put it as they were the the office manager, and they were all proud of that because they thought it was cute. But really, that's not going to stand up in an audit. You have to have the the modeling's actually reasonable. So that's the good good news with that. Yeah, and what, yeah. What, really cool. A long time ago, I had a client whose kids were actually models. So I asked them, how much do the kids make for modeling? Now this is about thirteen years ago or so, and they made five hundred dollars a photo shoot. Mm. Okay. So we've kind of taken that inflation adjusted number and say, okay, if we say $700 a photo shoot and you're doing 13, you need to go do a good 20 photo shoots for your Instagram or Facebook and have those pictures available. So if the IRS asks, we always say that when you're, t when the test of any deduction is, can you look in the, can you look an auditor in the eye without smiling when you tell them what it is? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the test. Yep. You and start? it doesn't mean you need to use them all. Um, no. Some people too are a little weary of putting their kids out there on social media. So you can use them for um, booklets or like a, you know, brochure, your website, or you could do the, you know, their hand or it doesn't have to be like their face. So. I had one client that was concerned and they only took the back of the kids' pictures. Oh, okay. <laughs> that way they were doing, they were on a swing, they were in real yeah. estate. They were on a swing set. They were doing something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's some good looking, expensive headshots. Yeah. Hair. <laughs> My high hair shots. Yeah, exactly. It's a good looking skull back there, man. <laughs> Billy's got a good looking dome. <laughs> exactly. Or oh, that kid's Love got it. a big head. <laughs> yeah, right? Ooh, that's 600 a, sh a photo shoot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Hey, guys, Jesse here. Just jumping in real quick to remind you if you haven't gone to newyeargoalplanner.com yet and downloaded your perfect new year worksheet, Go take a minute right now and get it done. Guys, you're not going to hit your goals unless you have them written down specifically and looking at them every day. And on top of that, you have to know what your time is worth because every single minute of time if it's being wasted unproductively is money out the window. And guys, I want you to focus hard on your goals. So go to newyeargoalplanner.com, download my free sheet. It's free, I'm not selling you anything. I just want to give you the tool that I'm using to hit my goals in 2023. So those of you listening right now, I want you to know at the end of this, okay, at the end of this, I'm going to give you guys a link to go to, to get more of these tax tips, by the way, okay, for free 99, go get some more <laughs> of these tax tips. And then also, if you want to set up a free consulting call with them, right, to go over some of this stuff, okay, normally this is not something that, you know, you can dedicate this much time to, right, for no cost. Is that correct? Right. Yeah, yeah, we we will for for the assessment. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, for the assessment. I'm not saying you get two and a half hours of vitamin melanin's time for free. Exactly. Yeah, no, no, but we have an assessment and we have a, we have a special. And so, so guys, just if, if you can, jot this down, 612-662-6629, okay? 612-662-6629. Now, text me at that number and say free tax assessment, okay? And if you text me free tax assessment, I'm going to give you the special code um, after this, so you can go check this out. But that's just one thing, right? Like, are you doing that? Who's doing that? If you're listening, are you doing that? Probably not. And if you are, good for you. Holy crap! But what other stuff like that? That's that's mind blowing. So what other what other stuff like that that people aren't even thinking about? Yeah. So there's a rule called the Augusta Strategy, where it's from uh, the golf tournament in Augusta, Georgia. Like it. All the all the Audis would come in and uh, rent out the locals' houses for the golf tournament. So the locals would leave. They rent their their house out for a couple weeks. So the IRS extended that to everybody. Um, it says you can rent your house out for 14 days tax free. So what we like to do with our clients is have them hold their corporate board meetings in their home. Okay. And they can rent their house to their business. Um, and so you get a good 14 days rent tax free. Wow. They rent your house to your own business. To your business. Yeah. So it's basically shifting it from a taxable bracket to tax free income. Diggity damn. And you, as yeah. you were saying, you normally recommend what? Um, the way that we basically figure is the fair market value of their house. And then we like to just knock off three zeros, but the best way to do it is look at daily rent around your area. If you were to rent your house out to like a wedding, for example, what would you charge? Got you. Got you. That's awesome. Yeah. Like, it can add up pretty quickly for some people. So that's an easy one. Another thing that my dad does with my grandma is he shifts some of his income to her lower tax bracket. So he puts about 80000 of his income into my grandma's name. He had her set up a separate corporation. She's a passive owner and he shifts, you know, he hires her company for services. So that 80,000 is taxed at her rate instead of his, saves him a good 40,000 on his taxes. She pays it about 10,000. So there's a 30,000 net savings there. So that's an easy one. That's really pretty impactful. You guys are like magicians. <laughs> You're like, hold on, hold on. Here's a rabbit, here's a rabbit, right? Here we go. It. And then you can do that with your kids in college too. It can help get out of state tuition to in state tuition, get them um, financial aid if you don't qualify for it. So there's a lot of things you can do that not only impact your taxes, but can save you on other ends too. Wow. It will make it so they don't qualify for financial aid if there's a grant or something. But mm -hmm. most of these people are making money already anyway. And that's okay. really not going to be an issue. Well, no, that's that's a great point, and I'm I'm assuming you probably have kind of like a flow chart of if this then that, if this then that, right? Or that's part of your consulting, right? Is okay. well, it really it just all depends. It's like what's in a bag totally. of groceries. You know, everybody's unique, and what kind of situation does it adhere to for you? It's just going to depend on your particular situation. And the the cool thing about that is, if you take a college student, you know, most parents make too much money to take the education credits. A lot of them do. So by the by the child getting forty thousand dollars of income, the tax on that is right at twenty five hundred dollars, and the ch the child takes her own education credits, and so that way there's zero tax on the forty thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay? Man. Now the the cool thing too is we had one client whose child was going to Hawaii for school, yeah. and now they had to fly out to Hawaii to have the corporate board meetings and stuff like that. So it makes your trips to see your children tax deductible. That's so awesome. <laughs> then we had we had one client whose child, they were in California, but their child was going to go to Arizona State, and they were paying out-of-state tuition. By having their own Arizona corporation, the child could show that they were financially independent. And after a year, they qualified to be a resident, so they saved a lot of money on tuition as well. Mm, yeah, it's a good move. Wow. So, like, see, that's, that's some real estate, like, deal structure and type of talk going on, right? Because you can't just mm -hmm. think of like the initial move, like chess. There's two or three moves after that. You got to be thinking about yeah. all of those, right? So if we do X, then you know what does Y and Z look like, and vice versa. Okay. Mm -hmm. But one yeah. of the things you have to do is you have to make sure that we we can tax plan people so they don't pay any taxes. Okay. But the problem is then you don't qualify for any loans. So if you're doing real estate deals, it's really really critical. Once we do your tax plan, to take that to your banker and say, "Am I still going to qualify for this, this, and this?" Because a or long talk time to Jesse did, here. 
we did a deal with a good friend of mine exactly. and we knocked out his taxes, but for two years he had trouble qualifying for a loan and he did a lot of flipper properties. Mm. And it was really, he said, I would never have done this looking back. So now we always have that conversation with people, you know, or what, what AGI do we want to keep you at? I have one client that never wants to go below 250 to make sure he doesn't pass up on a hundred thousand dollar deal all because he wanted to save $30,000 in tax. Well, it's really, really, that's really important for you guys to do. I'm glad that you mentioned that, and because um, I was about to, and a couple of questions from now, so you got you beat me to the punch. And Melody, thank you for the plug there, because absolutely, right? That's that's uh, what I can help with on my end of uh, of the world. Is if they don't qualify for fi for financing, we have our private financing program for those folks who go to the bank, and the bank says, "Sorry, you don't make enough money. Come back in a year or two or three. We could say we got you and work with them through our creative financing options. Uh, but they're paying a little bit more, all right? And if they, you know, you kind of have to kind of, you know, pick which medicine you want to take and and, and, and what's going to help you the most at that time. But that well, is so, why that is so you, important. If you meet with somebody, run numbers, you can run both scenarios and figure out what's the best for you. And so that's really, I think the key to all of this is make sure you're you're planning, not being reactive with your taxes. A lot of people are meeting with their tax professionals you know, it's February right now in the time of this recording. So they're meeting with their tax professionals kind of right now and saying, okay, what do I owe? Rather than meeting with them before the end of the year hits and saying, okay, what do I want to owe? What, so, should a, what should a very good tax uh, preparer, advisor, coach, Ray, whatever name you want to put on it, be doing it, throughout the year? Uh, the main thing is I would say just one communication. So as a client also, just communicate before you make big moves. And then I would say a good tax professional should be meeting with their clients before the end of the year hits. Uh, sometime after October 15th, before the end of the year, um, they should be running their clients numbers before the end of the year hits and their clients should know exactly what they're gonna owe so that they can have time to game plan around that, either set that aside if they, if, you know, if they have to pay it or if they choose to pay it or, you know, have time to say, what else can we do to fix that? Yeah, yeah, I I would agree. I mean, I do you think the average person is doing that? Is the average person no. reaching out and saying, hey, Not at it's all. September, October, we need to make some moves before the end of the year? No, and I would say also, um, another thing is to make sure your numbers are in order because all tax planning starts with knowing your numbers and so your books can't be neglected. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Um, I want, if you can, guys, I want you to hit on a few things for real estate investors, right? We have uh, investors, you know, very serious, experienced investors doing, you know, apartments and, you know, commercial mm -hmm. buildings and properties. We've got folks who are just getting into it, right? They're listening to the show and watching the stuff and they're studying and learning. And so we got, we got the whole gamut in our, in our audience. What should people be paying attention to in real estate investing specifically? Dad, I'll let you answer that one. Okay. Well- we have strategies for really a lot of capital gain strategies that work really, really well for investors. Now, I will say up front that these strategies don't work for flipping. So I'm going to give you some capital gain. This is a sale of a long, long asset you've had that's highly appreciated mm -hmm. or that you've taken all the depreciation on it. And you're one that instead of doing a 1031, you can consider these. Okay. Okay. So the first one is called what's called a charitable LLC. Mm. Sure. So I had a I had a client who was selling his business, but it could be real estate. He was selling it for six million dollars, and the tax we're in California, so it's higher tax, but the tax would have been twenty percent federal. You know, California is thirteen percent. Plus, you have net investment income tax, so his tax bracket was going to be almost thirty six percent. Wow! And it was it was two point two million dollars in tax. So what we did is we formed an LLC that the the client was a 1% manager. He was also a 99% non-voting member. We put a percentage of the property in before the sale, before it was even listed. And then right before the sale, you donate that 99% interest to a, to a charitable organization, a nonprofit. Now, charitable organizations, this is probably complicated for a podcast, but just to give you guys a flavor <laughs> of what's out there. Yeah. The charitable organization doesn't pay capital gains tax. So by putting it into this LLC, which you still control all the money and the property gets sold, 
it lowered the capital gains tax, plus he got a charitable contribution for it. So in this particular circumstance, they put 40% of the asset in the LLC. It got sold. He, he only paid the capital gains tax on 3.6, but he also got a $2.4 million tax deduction for the charity. So it lowered his tax down from $2.2 million down to $128,000. Wow. Now, what happens is that two point four sits in the LLC and you have that money to invest. It doesn't go to the charity until you pass away. So you'd have that 2.4, 2.2 of it you would have paid in tax anyway, and you'd have that money to invest. So if you make a pretty good rate of return over the next 20 to 30 years on that money by using the IRS's money instead of, instead of uh, sending it to the government, you could become extremely wealthy on this. A lot of times what we have people do is to buy a life insurance policy to pay their family back for the 2.4. So they buy a prepaid life policy, their family gets the same 2.4, and now they haven't paid, they never end up paying until death the, you know, the money to the charity. And you and you help out a charity. It has like three wins, maybe more. Tri- I counted three. Tri- tri- triple, triple scoop. <laughs> triple, triple scoop. scoop. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's here's Love what it. it does too. Yeah. You know, I, a lot of you aren't probably having an inheritance tax issue. Some of you are. But this pulls that money out of your estate. So in addition to saving the the income taxes on the capital gains, getting the charitable contribution, you also save 45% of whatever you put into the LLC off your inheritance tax. Wow. So you really, you I ran the numbers on this. For every dollar you put into this, you make a dollar twenty-two. Jeez. That's crazy. So it, and then plus you give a couple million dollars to a charity down the road. Wow. Okay. So that's a really good one when you the triple skip set up before you want to list the property. Okay. We also have other properties. We call it an extended escrow trust, where in, instead of selling a property, what you do is you form a trust, you sell it to the trust on the installment sale, and then the trust sells it. So oh. the trust is buying and selling it. They don't pay any tax. And then you set it up so the trust pays you a 30-year interest-only loan with a balloon payment in 30 years, so you don't pay that capital gains tax for 30 years from now. And you have the use of all that cash to be able to invest instead of paying the tax. Wow. So the biggest thing with that is why you should talk to your tax professional before doing anything big, because <laughs> it can make a difference of two, two over $2 million <laughs> or more. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. And well, that's just it is having that open communication, right? And being able to, yeah. to reach them and, but to have the answers yeah, to, to know that, right? How many people are going to respond with that type of a solution though? Yeah. And I would say too, with your newbies is just make sure they're tracking everything, keeping, uh, I just talked to somebody actually yesterday that he was texting me and asking me questions and he didn't realize that you, he was supposed to keep receipts or actually records of, of, documentation things that he's deducting he thought bank statements were enough Man. And so that's not enough and so we actually are finishing up recording a a course that has about 20 sessions in it um just a tax essentials course oh, this sweet. is for anybody starting out anybody um you know growing that has a, a business that's actually established um that will help them along the way and so um pretty soon that should be done and so they'll help out your people there Love it. Yeah, I would love to to have that access to that as soon as you're done. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, our listeners would love that. Our students would love that. Um, and, and their partners and, you know, folks who are doing stuff is sometimes you, you just don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah. And, and, and it's so, a whole nother, it's a whole jungle. The tax world's a whole new world. So you got to have somebody guide you through it. What was it, Cole 45? Were we recording yet when you said that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> are we recording? Say it again. <laughs> That's the same. Yeah, he, he, the Colt forty five cannot penetrate the tax code. <laughs> you had a Colt forty five, and you shot it through the tax code. It would not go through. Nope. It's that thick. That thick. That's crazy. That is insane. Yeah, and people think they can figure it out on their own without a professional. So we, I have a picture of my dad when he, he, it wasn't even during COVID time. He just was in a hurry and he had to get somewhere, and he didn't think he could make it to the barber, and so he decided to just try to cut his own hair and uh anyways it it looked awful it looked like a kid to, <laughs> to the, the, just the butcher to it and uh i was making fun of him but we use that as an example don't do this yourself because it's it's very complicated stuff that you 
you don't want your your taxes to look like my dad's haircut. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, one of one of the books all of you, everybody on the podcast should read is the uh, the richest man in Babylon. Oh, richest man in Babylon. Yeah. Okay, and then the richest man in Babylon, the guy. You know, he, he, the first rule is a part of what I earn is mine to keep, which means you need to take a percentage of your income and shove it into your forever fund. Okay. And the guy saved up his money for a year and then he went to the to the baker and they went together and bought jewels and brought them back while somebody sold them stones. So rule number two is, you know, always have somebody as your partner, somebody that's very knowledgeable about the industry. You know, why why invest with a baker to buy jewels? Why not invest with a jeweler? Right. Yeah, completely. So you'll never beat a, a plumber doing plumbing and do it as efficiently as a plumber. So always find people that know the skill and partner with them on how to, like with us, pay as little tax as legally possible. Make sure you have somebody in your corner for that. Yeah. No, that is such a great, great reminder, right? And and I'm, I'm the same way as do it. Do what you do best, do what you like to do, and are best at it, and let someone else do the rest of it, right? Mm-hmm. That's, uh, yeah, at, as as we record, we're doing um, an addition and a, like a four-season porch and a deck and all this other stuff, and A, I can't even do that. I'm like, look at these hands. <laughs> these, these hands don't do manual labor. Come on. Right? <laughs> yeah. But even if I could, I wouldn't be doing it, right? <laughs> because it's just not the, it's not what I what I like and what I do best, right? It's not yeah. the best use of my time. They do it way better all day long. I'm not even going to try to go do it and do it myself. I'm going to just yeah. do what I do, you know? So for I sure. love it. Question for you. And we may, we may have to, we might have to do a part two here. Um, here you go. Or we could do probably part 57. You guys know so much, <laughs> so many freaking secrets. I love it. On seller financing, do you deal with a lot of seller financing deals? Yes. Okay. How about a lot of option deals? Lease option, lease purchase. Well, I had a very interesting lease option deal. Ooh. What the guy did is he he did a Roth IRA. He formed an LLC within the Roth IRA. Okay. And then it, as he was going to buy a property, he would the Roth IRA didn't have that much money in it at the beginning. So he would buy from the people an option to buy the property from the Roth IRA. And then later, right after that, after that was a completed deal, he would then come in and buy the property from the people. Then he would do his thing, fix it up, hold it for a long time. And when he goes to sell the property, he has the Roth IRA exercise the option and yank all the profits out and put them into the Roth IRA. Wow. That is definitely not something you hear about people doing left and right. <laughs> so, but that was an option. Now, the reason you have to it? do the Roth IRA with the option first mm-hmm. is because if you buy it and then give a then give an option, then you're doing what's called a prohibitive transaction, which is a no-no. But by doing the the Roth IRA with an it with an option with an independent party, you can buy that when you buy the property from the people. It's not considered a prohibitive transaction. You're just buying it subject to the uh, it, to the option. Yeah. So the timing's got to be that would be something right that would be a real good uh, tool for people that are buying properties, wanting to really improve them and trap your income in the Roth IRA that you never have to pay tax on. Wow, that's that's good. That's really good. Well, there's so there's a lot of uh, situations where you know, especially with the market the way it is now, coming across a seller who, like this this is a funny thing, right? So I was having a conversation with uh, someone the other day, and words are funny, right? The words you use, how you use them, right? And uh, I think you know our friend our friend Lou Brown says this a lot: magic words, right? Just magic words. <laughs> you know? And I remember from my mortgage days, right? I thought you know we called fifty people, hundred people, you know, in a night. And I'd say, hey, do you want to refinance your loan? Do you want to refinance your mortgage? It'd be no, no, no. Because right? somebody wants to do that because it sounds like work. Either yeah. A, what the heck does that mean? B, sounds like work. No, 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 no. But I'd say, hey, would you want to save you know, $400 to $500 a month on your monthly payment every month starting next month? Oh, well, sure. How does that work? Same question. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's the same thing. Same process. A different it's question, but same process. It. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so with seller financing, when we get into that world, you know, do you want to be the bank? Do you want to sell your house on terms? You know, you want to you get all the jargony with them. No, they don't want to do that. But then you say, hey, do you not want to have to pay, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in taxes to the IRS? And what are you going to do about that huge tax bill? Now they're like, oh, wait a minute. And so it's just different words that you use and how you use them, right? So 
and 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 you know that a lot on the tax side, right? So there's super advantages to doing seller financing or an option to purchase. And sometimes there's a pro, sometimes it's a con, depends on the scenario, right? Yeah. Let me give sure. let me give you a specific way to be able to purchase your property cheaper by using the installment sale. Mm-hmm. Love it. When a lot of times, let's say somebody's going to sell a house and they're going to retire, they're getting out of their rental properties and their their income's going to drop, you know. But a person, if they're under eighty thousand dollars a year, pays a capital gains rate of zero. Okay, so let's say you have somebody that's selling a piece of property; they're going to make five hundred thousand on it. They they might pay twenty percent tax plus their state tax plus that investment income tax because it's over the two fifty. If you can have them sell it to you on the installment sale, and then you dole the you dole the payments out to them so their income stays below the eighty thousand dollars, their in their capital gains rate goes to zero on that. So they're not paying any any tax on they're that not paying because they're under the eighty. They can keep their adjusted gross income or taxable income under eighty thousand dollars. This is for a married couple. Yeah, but you could actually work with them and dole out the money to them, which they they really want to keep it invested anyway, and earn the interest from you. But this way, they could get it a little bit at a time, keep their in, keep their income below eighty thousand dollars, and reduce the tax totally. Because a lot of times, people won't sell a property because there's there's income tax to pay on it. They don't want to pay that tax. This is a way for them not to pay it. And this is where that also you can use that. Somebody could use that extended. You could introduce them to the extended escrow trust, where they could sell it, and put all their money in the trust and and dole it out to themselves to stay out of the eighty thousand dollars. So it's two different ways to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what about paying them interest only versus principal? What effects does that have on the situation as well? What if you go above 80000 but you do interest only versus principal and interest? Well, then the interest is going to be tax deductible by you and taxable to them. Right? And it's all, uh, the, the capital gains is only taxable to them as they receive the cash. And then a portion of that. So you may want to you may want to structure the note so you pay all the principal before you pay any interest. Yeah. So everything goes that first to the principal the and then interest. Portion first instead of paying the interest. The interest builds up. You pay it all at the end. You won't get a tax deduction for it, but then again, you may be able to structure it so you get a better price on the property yeah, or they'll sell it to you at all. And I I just love it because this is the stuff that it's a whole nother world than just it's on the market. What do they want? What's the numbers? I'm one of ten people. Let's go get this thing. Yeah. Like that is not the way to buy real estate, I, I typically, if you if you can help it, right? It's having that conversation, it's creating a solution that benefits, you know, all parties and 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 a lot of it's educating, right? Educating them on it and so they understand what the options are, why they might want to look at that. Yeah, it gives you tools in your tool belt to set you apart from all the other people trying to get get at them. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Ah. Oh. Okay, there's so much more I want to ask, but I know I want to respect your time and you got stuff coming up here. I got stuff coming up. We'll have a part two. We'll have a Sounds part good. two. Um, but yeah, guys. So, I mean, just here, I don't know if you could quantify that. Maybe maybe with your like Mr. Wizard brain, <laughs> uh, you know, you guys could go. But like on a low end to a high end, you just saved someone probably what, 20, 30,000 to maybe a couple million dollars with just those tips, right? Yep. Literally with just those tips. Like if you, if you just, you got them. Take them, use them, say thank you, right? Say thanks, Byron. Thanks, Melanie. That's because that's killer. And that's just a few of the things that you guys drop. So I remember you handed me a business card. And your business card had this all these things on the back of it, right? Yeah, the seven steps. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh, I don't think my current CPA has ever mentioned that. So I'm like, ooh, I don't think everyone's asked me about this. And I, yeah, I was very impressed with that. So super, super cool. Well, guys, so I'm going to give you a little gift, okay? But again, if you want to get a free tax assessment, okay, if you want to get the free tax assessment with Melanie, with Byron, text me at 612-662-6629. 612-662-6629. Say free tax assessment. But if you want to just get an idea of what you could save without even getting on the phone, right? Because maybe you're shy, you're busy, whatever. We get it. It's cool. Go to taxsavingsestimator.com, right? Taxsavingsestimator.com. And that is going to do exactly what for them, guys? It'll just show them the low-hanging fruit, what we estimate we can save them. So if there's no savings, it still makes sense to talk and see, um, but it, it's kind of just the, 
what are the few strategies? How much that, how much can that save me? Just I a few it. things we mentioned today. Yeah. And we always say it doesn't hurt to get a second opinion. If you're going to get work on your house, if you're going to get a medical diagnosis, everybody always gets a second opinion. But for some reason, people don't do that with their taxes. And so it's important to just make sure maybe your maybe your uh, tax professionals doing a great job and we'll tell you that. So it's always good to get a second opinion. 100%. What is the what is the number one expense people pay in their life? Taxes is a lot for most people. <laughs> taxes pretty much for yeah, for yep. most people, right? The number one thing you pay. So yeah, definitely yep. get a second opinion. Make sure you're working with somebody knowledgeable. And uh guys, thank you so much for for being on today. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to uh, having you take a look at at my mess. I mean, my fun. I mean, <laughs> my fun mess. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Good seeing job. where seeing where I'm not uh, catching everything as well. So, yeah, for sure. Well, thanks for having us. We appreciate it. Absolutely, guys. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the day.